Hey there friends, it's Gun Gaming back again. Alright, so there's actually a lot we're going to cover in this video. And I thought about breaking it into smaller chunks, but then I realized like the whole reason I'm making this video is because I couldn't find one that gave this kind of detail to a, to a noob. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to do my best to run you guys through everything I've learned uh, very recently as I have uh, been digging into this. Um, First things first, kind of putting pulling off the feet here, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. Uh, we need to remove the one remaining Be Quiet fan. So I had thought about keeping this one. This is going to end up being a panda build, even if I wanted it to be pure white. All of the accents here are black. Uh, and there's just like some black pieces I you can't get away from, like your motherboard, for example. Just inevitably, part of your motherboard is going to be black. I've never found a single pure white motherboard. Uh, even like the formula... Uh, Asus Formula Z690 for $800. <whistles> Wish I had a noise effect person to sub that in, but um, ridiculously expensive. That's still not all pure white. There's still some, you know, dark gray motherboard. So anyway, we're doing full panda. Uh, so I did not really like these wouldn't be necessarily out of the norm for the look of the case, but uh, I don't want them anyway. Um, the Be Quiet fans don't sync up quite the same. They won't have the RGB that I want. Uh, on and on and on and on and on. So we are just going to ditch them. Can I just tell you this is the important thing I have? Magnetized Winger McDinger. Oh my gosh. Hugely frustrating. Oh, this one is slightly magnetized. Huh. That's nice. Then I'm probably going to put these fans uh, in my NZXT H510 case that I have for my old build. Uh, that's a reasonably well ventilated case. I'm sticking it in a recess so it's not going to get great ventilation generally. Um, so it needs to kind of get stepped up a notch anyway. Now the Be Quiet uh, case is really good about including all of these like rubberized components for the fan so that way you don't get the fan jitter. Uh, they also have, you can see right down here, there's a little clip uh, that holds this wire in place so we need to declip de it. That's a super technical term. Used only by the most technical of PC builders. Declipping. Oh, come on. Tell you what, they, it's like really jammed up in there. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to stand this up to get it out. I need to unwire oh, un it from the back anyway. Uh, I don't think they expected you to want to replace the fans. It's also true from the fan header. And Be Quiet does have a nice series of fans. Um, I too am waiting impatiently. There's nothing patient about how I'm waiting. For Cameron's Nexus to get their fan testing machine up and running. Alright, so it really was most of that clip. Holding it in place that was causing these issues. And this is fed through like the smallest of crevices. I don't it's like witchcraft and wizardry they used to get this in here. I hope I don't have to like Yeah, it's not gonna fit. Okay, well that's fun. Um I really don't want to have to take them off the black plate. Ugh. I had to take this all apart when I inverted the case. Seriously? <sighs> okay, well, we're just gonna have to take this apart whether we like it or not at this point. Uh, um, I'm going to go get my little screw cup here. Whew. 
Ooh. All of these are in live time because I uh, am too impatient to do editing uh, while I'm going through this build. Maybe by the time we're done with all these videos, I will have the patience to do that. But I certainly don't have the patience to do that now. Okay, so basically what we're going to be doing here, since I can't physically fit this cable through and the cable does not detach on either end, uh, and it is stuck down in that crevice there, what we're going to do here are two things. We're going to be removing the whole plate. If you watch the inversion video, you'll understand exactly what we're doing. Um, yeah. I don't really have much more to say than that. Other than that I'm annoyed about it. Nice thing is, as we're doing this, we can go ahead here and get the new one slotted in. It'll be hunky dory dory, gloriously happy for its lot in life, etc., etc. Okay, so one of the other things I want to talk about uh, as we do this video is uh, fan pressures, fan directions, all that stuff. So after having done a lot of research, uh, the, the, the community is pretty split on whether or not any of it makes a difference. Uh, I think there is some confusion about air exchange, like with how much, how many meters of air are per pushed each, each minute. Um, just because a fan has the ability to push a certain amount of air doesn't mean that much air is actually being exchanged within the case. I just wanna kinda illustrate that. Um, and the pressure density on each side, I, you know, I didn't pay enough attention in physics to act like you even know what I'm talking about here. So long story short, um, people have different views on this. I, I don't know that you necessarily can have like a wrong view uh, with whether or not you like positive or negative pressure. People will say the, the benefit of positive pressure is that you get less dust. Um, but people disagree with that. Uh, I think in the end there's so much air flowing in, in a multiple fan configuration style that uh, the more important thing is not whether or not it's positive or negative pressure. And basically, when you're using all the same bands like we're going to be using, the way you get positive pressure or like a higher air density in the case than, than my environment is by having more fans going in than fans going out. Um, but that's not really an entirely great analysis to give because there, this case specifically has so much, it's so permeable. There's so many places for the air to go that it's not really, um, not really an issue. Oh, I forget that there's like a back. I was hopeful that this would be like enough here. I don't think I missed one. wish that they would have made this slot just like, you know, a uh, half an inch squared more diameter just so you could pull the, like a four pin and three pin fan header uh, in and out of this slot. I just, uh, the, even if it was just for your own fans, and even if your own fans didn't improve over time, like this was the Pure Wings 2s were as good as it gets, which is not the case. They have Pure Wings 3s now. Uh, but even if that were the case, at some point there will likely be a mechanical failure, and you'll need to be able to replace it. And um, could you imagine doing this with a motherboard already in place? 
I can. I don't like how I feel while I'm imagining it, though. Alright, we're able to finally move this. Fan has been released. We are free! We are free! Freedom! Alright, okay, well, now we get to do this. So, uh, right now I'm just going to feed the fan through. Uh, notably, all of these fans have RGB, so uh, as you're looking down here at each of these fans, you're going to notice I have two cords instead of one. So, this is going to be convenient for me. And I actually might be able to like, pass this through the IO shield. Yep, I can. So, I'm actually just going to. Uh, wait, that doesn't quite work. Alright, so I think we'll just stick this fan up and in. I don't we'll worry about the direction in a moment. Just note that there are arrows on top of the fan showing the direction of the fan spinning and then show where the fan air is going. They usually go from what looks to be the front of the fan to the back of the fan. That's usually how airflow works, certainly is on these. Okay, so we want to accomplish two things here. We need to re- uh, insert these into that fancy dancy make schmervel blurfin. Uh, I don't know, uh, what a hook, I guess, is probably what you call it. Uh, but make schmervel blurfin is, uh, is a technical term used only by the most elite computer builders in the world. So, to use that. Anybody who doesn't know what it means is, uh, is a fuddy duddy. Okay, the one annoying thing I always had when I did the inversion with this case was just seating each of these rubber nipples on the edge, which you guys can't see very well right now, but I'll show you when we're done. They, when you insert the frame back in, it, they tend to buckle, um, and this gets really frustrating. Uh, we're just going to swap our screwdriver over. Uh, I think we're ready to go with all these screws back in. Um, I think for all of the other fans, there's a pretty clear uh, cabling path. So I'm not going to be super concerned about any of the rest of them. This one is just kind of the weirdest. For whatever reason. And truthfully, I should be like, they're, the three on the front side of the case need to be the most beautiful screws. going to briefly inspect each of these screws to see which ones I have kept the black paint on most intact. One, two, close buckle your shoe. Three, four, out the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. I don't think that's copyrighted, so I'm gonna leave it in. All right. We have all our screws. Six in the back, three in the front. I also like to leave these videos uncut so you guys can see uh, not me rambling, because that's kind of lame, but uh, you can see exactly how long it takes. Like, I'm not, you can pop in and say, like, oh, okay, hey, I, I'm thinking about doing this for my build today. I have this amount of time uh, before my kid demands dinner and I need to make it, or between meetings at work and I have, you know, I'm building this, this build for work purposes and I'm, that, can you some of my work time do that or, or not? I'm not here to judge. Uh, but uh, but you can get an instant look at how long it's going to take you. Uh, and notably, if you're watching me do it, it might take you less time. Because you can learn about all the stupid things I did. And opt to not do them. This, is, this feels like much tighter than last time. 
found myself tapping, so it's a little weird to have it feel so tight. The thing that's killing me with this build though is the AIO. The AIO is killing me. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you guys about fan direction. So the biggest thing that most of the community, uh, PC building community, seems to agree on. I'm sure there's somebody who will post in the comments about how I'm totally wrong, and you should, you should do that. Uh, discourse is backbone of human civilization. Um, vibrant discourse, the best. Uh, but the main thing everybody agrees on is that the fans that are pulling in air into your case should be supported by a filter. So uh, the filter will noticeably reduce the amount of air that's coming through. Anybody who tells you otherwise is lying to you. Uh, you know, not just go watch some gamers nexus videos on like total computed value of, of permeable surface on a on a on a grate and see how much that impacts some performance. Um, uh, but th that aside, you know, it just, it just has, it's another barrier for air to tra transfer through. And if the fan is high enough static pressure and it forces air hard enough, it's not really going to be an issue, but it does restrict the airflow nominally. So I, I do find it funny when people are like, are computing the differences in static pressure inputs and outputs on fans and thereby determining whether or not they have a positive or negative pressure air setup makes me laugh a little bit because there are so many other factors that are entering into that equation like other other air permeate other places for air to permeate permeate um uh da, 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 da. but what i was saying is that the reason why it's important to have the filters on the intake slots is that is where the air is going to um that's where the air is going to get pulled into the case predominantly. Now it can get pulled in through other orifices uh, if you have uh, you know outtakes in other places, um, but most of the air is going to come in through those filters. It's going to capture all the dust, and in this case and in other cases like it, uh, there are there are two removable filters: one along the bottom, one along the top. Uh, pretty easy to extract. Uh, go ahead and clean those off. Bing, bada, boom, reinsert them, and you're good to go. So, but it makes for a really easy case maintenance when you have it set up correctly. Uh, and dust is the death of semiconductor components. So, um, keeping a dust free case is not only lo looks nice, but dust is what kills semiconductor, and uh, semiconductor components. And I know that, uh, both from you know, experiencing dust killing things, but because when I was a kid, the Micron had just built a new facility. And if for those of you who aren't aware, Micron is like one of the biggest chip producers in the US. Um, and we're just gonna turn this fan. I'm gonna flip this case down so you guys can see. And uh, they make they own Crucial, so you'll notice you'll note them for like Crucial memory. But they also sell to basically everyone else. Um, yeah. Okay. So these screws are the ones I was just working on. There are these little rubber uh, uh, feet, I guess maybe you call them, the little nubbins that fit into these holes that reduce noise uh, or chatter from fans moving or other components that might be moving components uh, that would otherwise agitate the motherboard tray, fan tray, etc. Uh, and, and so those are really, really good, really, really nice to make it so your case doesn't make noise. Um, which is something I care about, but also is, you know, because it's called Be Quiet, I really care that they care. 
Um, okay, and now uh, the screws, I think these are actually self-tapping screws for these Corsair fans, but they are going to go into the holes. Yeah, they don't, they're not, it's not even threaded, so these totally are self-tapping. What we're going to do first, though, is just go ahead and remove this plastic film. Uh, don't know if it makes a difference if it's still on there or not, but we're just going to remove it. And we're going to make sure that the uh, corded side is the side closest. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and pull down these cords and slide this off to the side of the desk. I'm just going to pull these down so that they're taut. Lord. Get back in the hook holder, my deal. There's like, it was made only for one cord, not two cords, the hook holder make a deal, again, technical term. Only for the, uh, the initiated, I probably should have untwisted these cables. I think maybe if I twist the fan, up and back. Ah, there we go. We got it. All right, so definitely don't want them to be twisted. It will make it so that the hole doesn't work quite right and, and just makes scale management more of a nightmare. So fixing that first. And I pulled it just a little bit too taut there. All right, and then I do have these uh, handy dandy rubber feet that I'm still going to utilize on both sides of these screws. Um, you do want to use the included screws with the Corsair fans. They are apparently just the right height. Uh, and obnoxiously, I have to use this other screwdriver in this case because of shielding around the outside. You know, that's it. <sighs> Creepily enough, this is kind of just sitting here. I was talking to someone about my, if you guys saw one of my very first videos was review of screwdrivers, which some people are like, why would you review screwdrivers? It's so dumb. Um, but like the number one, one of the number one rated screwdrivers on a lot of websites, including like most notably Wire Cutter by New York Times, uh, was not magnetized. So the, like, the screws would just fall off. And you know, for certain applications, it's not a big deal. Okay, we're going to kind of tighten this like a drum. So as soon as you start feeling it getting tight, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, when using screws, you want to go corner to corner. Um, so like kind of diagonal as you're inserting and you want to tighten them that way as well. That just in ensures that you have uh, a more uh, an even displacement because there's like a lot of pressure just on that one part and you don't want it like being pulled down here and doing the and bow and forcing it to bow out because it's too tight over here right so uh easiest way to kind of experience that is just like go use some kind of uh so a, a, a non-pliable substance like a piece of paper and like just push it down on one side and then push it too far and see how that works out for you. It'll pop up and it'll bow and get all weird. You want to apply just the right amount of force and as equally as possible. You just kind of want to start these. the same thing if you're ever changing a tire on a car. Uh, you don't want to over tighten because it'll make it bend or it just won't seat correctly is also a possibility. So. But once we have them all in reasonably, you can go pretty taut here. I mean, honestly, just what matters is that they're in enough that they're not going to go anywhere. Uh, the fans do move a little bit, so you do want them tight, but you don't need them to be over tight. I just will kind of use this ratcheting screwdriver to kind of get the last feel. And I can see on the rubber here when it's starting to get really, really taut in there. Obviously that's not going anywhere. So um, I have to say this already, uh, 
more white the better in this case is looking snazzy. Uh, I, I'm really, really liking how it looks. Okay, we can't do any fans on the front. Uh, I have to find out how the radiator is going to sit. Um, what I'm guessing is going to happen, if you can see in here, there's a slot, the fans, the three fans that come with the radiator, which are magnetic levitation fans, are all going to sit up here. Um, there's less, you can see less RGB because of both the black filter as well as the, you know, the mesh front of the case are not super permeable for light. So uh, the, the, the effect of the RGB of the front of the case is less important to me. This, I'm also gonna have the case kinda uh, cornered so that's mostly facing the wall anyway. I care much more about the internals of the case and getting the RGBs on the internals of the case. So, <sighs> but that's that. Okay, so next thing we wanna do, we're going to be installing a fan on the bottom here. Um, I'm gonna do my best to get a good angle for you guys but it's pretty hard. This one, all right, I think that'll work. Just trying to move this back as far as possible. It's gonna get cornered no matter what, so it, part of the shot's gonna get cut off, but uh, here we have this set up. So we're just gonna take another fan. So you will remember, uh, so here, the bag of case, no filter. We're gonna send out that air out that direction. We're gonna pull air from the front and the bottom of the case uh, you know, cool air, sinks hot air rises as well. So, you know, uh, the idea here is to pull as much cool air in. I don't know, it doesn't really matter in like an ambient environment where the, like the air temperature in your room, it doesn't really change all that much depending on the height, but like notably maybe changes half a degree and that can impact your, your GPU performance and your GPU throttling. So whatever, we're going to do that. Um, and I am, you'll note that I did leave on the, uh, I did leave on the plastic here. Again, I'm not gonna be removing any of that until we're totally done with the build. Uh, there's a greater than 0% chance I'm going to scuff that up. So, you know, let's not do that. Um, totally digging it though. I think it looks radtagular. Okay, so, uh, but this is going to be pulling air into the case. A uh, little bit of a downside here, we are gonna get the the butt side of the of the of the thing facing here. Um, and a little bit more obnoxious it's gonna be like underneath. So this will be partially covered. Um, and this will impair the use of the hard drive tray underneath it as well. So like it would have to sit on top like this, uh, but there's not really a way for us to screw that in. I I think that this is another thing I love about building computers is I love the I love the challenge, like the mental, like okay I want to do this thing, and the, and that it's like so singular, right? Like when you do your build, you probably you might buy everything that I bought, but one or two things will be different. Um, I like a new versions come out or you didn't want to spend as much or you just like couldn't get the same video card that I got. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit with 3080s. Um, and for most people you don't even get. So I, I do feel really lucky, really blessed to have uh, that pick and to have also gotten a 3060 Ti. I'm one lucky bloke, as they say in England. Um, just trying to decide here. I don't. I'm not going to be installing any hard drives. Uh, I kind of wanted the option to be able to do that for some reason in the back of my head, but I don't actually care about it. So I don't care about having that option. So we're going to come around the back side. Just going to kind of grab this here. I don't know why I'm making this harder on myself than it needs to be. This does pop off. It's being a problem child right now, but it does pop off. Okay, so we're going to feed the cables up the back. Make sure Mr. Cable Time Magoo isn't in the way. 
line up correctly. Oh no! This is one of those, don't do what I just did. Make sure your screws are ready beforehand. Ugh. Yeah, baby, you saw me do that. Um, let's just get this seated with one screw, that way I have more options for the other ones in terms of like what I'm able to grab. Uh, you can also, in this case, uh, these are set up to mount um, you can mount uh, 3.5 inch uh, SDDs here as well that floats your boat alright we're not going to get this very tight at all just barely snug snug like a bug in a rug um And now that I've done this, I'm also realizing that I might have wanted to. Well, we're just going to get two in so that these are in the right spot. And then I'm go I don't know if be quite include extra rubber feet, but a rubber foot here would make sense. There are rubberized padding. There is rubberized padding on the fan with the QL series. So I'm not super worried about it making noise just because that rubberized grip is going to dampen the sound regardless of the direction, but just so I make a point. Yeah, unfortunately there be quite did not include any. So that's fine. Like I said, I don't, I'm not really concerned about this making noise um, because the rubberized grip on the bottom will absorb all of that, uh, all of the jitter chatter, whatever you want to call it, movement of the fan, at this point let's just get this tightened in like a drum, um, and then this also provides for like a flush interior as well, so again, remember we're pulling air in from the bottom and forcing it out, up through the top and the back, so the top does not have a filter, so a lot of people are a lot of people really like top-mounted AIOs because of fan placement. Um, Gamers Nexus did a video. Jay's Two Cents did a video about Gamers Nexus's video. Other people have done videos. I'm sure Jay Bauer has 18 videos about it. All in German. Um, but long story short, you wait. Oh, a spit and this doesn't apply to this build, which I'll get to in a minute, but you want, most people will mount their AIOs on the top because most of the pumps are on the CPU block and you want the air to get trapped in the radiator and not in the pump. The pump will wear out if air gets trapped in the pump. So um, just to kind of lay this down and illustrate. You, uh, so typically the radiator, you would put your AIO radiator up here with the fans, drawing air in, uh, cooling off the radiator, pushing the air through the case, cooling off your GPU, and then sending it back out. Um, and the, the, the pump would sit down on your CPU. And most of the time this is done just because having a front-mounted radiator uh, is problematic because the, the tubing doesn't stretch far enough uh, for you to be able to reach up and put it onto your CPU. Now in this build, uh, the kind of the opposite will end up being true as you will see by the time we get to that point. Uh, but we are going to do a front mounted AIO and because it's inverted, we can put the pump right here. The air will rise easily to the top of the radiator. And there's some people who are saying like, I don't know, Jay Two Cents made a huge deal about this, but you want like the bubbles equally dispersed along the top of the radiator fans. I, like it doesn't matter. You have the same amount of surface area displacement of energy, right? It's just this is a question of like where is that surface area displaced? Technically, you get more surface area throughout the fin assembly than you do even at like the edge of the radiator, and there's more metal shielding the edge of the radiator. So you know, I 
you could very easily make the argument that you should do it there. And through all of this, I'm making the argument that we should all invert cases. Um, so uh, I'm doing it purely mostly because of looks, but after starting to do it because of looks, I, I realized that you have this really helpful configuration. Uh, this is gonna reduce dust intake. Most cases I've seen include the dust filters on the front, often on the bottom. I rarely see them with filters on the top. So, uh, you know, I'm sure that there are some cases that include it. I just don't know what they are. Okay, so the next part is gonna be super easy. Now they included this for radiators, um, which is kind of hilarious. Um, and it does screw in with two screws here, but they have this uh, removable fan tray. And all we have to do with this one, uh, pull out this assembly, we can set the case on the ground, and we can connect our three fans through here. We'll route all the cables on the back corner, so we need them all on this side of the case. Um, now that I have two, now that I have uh, two displays, you can actually like, see along the top of the case, so that's kind of handy. So yeah, we'll want them on this side, uh, so you can't, I'm trying to show, so my hand is now over here, so now you can see like, the two cameras. Uh, but we want them to be over on this side. So that's where we're gonna want the cords to go, just so it forces all of the cabling to the back of the case, uh, where we will have a veritable rat's nest of wiring, but it'll be super accessible uh, for our build. Bing, bada, boom, that's all you gotta do. Uh, and you'll see that the, you can just choose here between a. Uh, well, 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter fans. Uh, so we do have reasonably good options. Uh, we're just going to remove the case. No need for that. Take a swig of ye old water. Imported who knows when, from who knows where. All right, making great progress here. So these fans I did, I purchased. So one note, a lot of retailers, I, so I'm a big fan of Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy will always do price match, except for coupon codes and Hands down, the best price on these fans that has ever existed, uh, certainly uh, with any kind of frequency, has been on Newegg for $84. I actually bought some from Best Buy that I haven't even gone to pick up yet um, on sale for like $103, and that was like the best price that they'd gone for for a long time. Um, then this one went on sale with a $30 coupon, and. Boom, here we are. All right, so you know what we forgot to do? Oh, okay, it doesn't matter with that one. Oh, oh, I can go ahead and pull off the plastic from that one <laughs> without any issues. And the plastic is actually in, in, internal in the case, so uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh no, the, the, I won't be able to grab the plastic pieces and pull them off, uh, but we're good. We are good to go. Okay, so remember, uh, these go in like this. Uh, so we want the cords coming out the back way. And uh, notably, um, I'm just te testing this myself. Make sure you test this yourself. If you're doing this, make sure you have in your mind the orientation. The fans uh, will not fit along the top of this. So you need to make sure you know what's the top and what's the bottom. The fans will physically not fit along the top. So I'm just gonna be setting the fans all on top of underneath it like this. Then we'll screw them in like so. So we'll, we'll get these all set up in an array, get them all ready to go. Um, which leaves us one extra fan, so 
uh, and that will have a purpose. Like I said, we're going to mount that on the back of the radiator. Um, just know that that's a thing. Okay, we just want the, we're going to want the cabling. I think, like, you know, notably we could do it so it's like out like that, but it doesn't really matter. You just want it all in the same spot. And the only other thing that we're thinking about here, we need to have these fans pulling air from the inside to the outside. So we're going to be having these face down. Just keep checking yourself on that. Again, you can look along the frame, I think on the top of it, um, show you guys right here. There are arrows indicating which way the fan spins is the one that's on the outside. So it spins uh, this direction. Um, and then the other one shows you uh, the, uh, the other direction. Thingy me thingy. Um, now, it doesn't matter for this which way the cables kind of come out here, so I am going to mix these up a little bit just so that they're all more accessible uh, and kind of aimed towards the middle. So uh, we'll have them like this and then the last one like this because I don't want them at like the very edge and then pushing out and getting smashed against things when they don't need to be. These are along the top of the case, so you're not going to see these cords anyway. Uh, and then uh, pulled immediately to the back of the case. So again, not an issue. Although here it does come out kind of from the side. So obnoxiously, we kind of have to have this one all the way up here. So a little suboptimal, uh, but that's because you'll see here, they come through a little hole that Corsair has engineered on the side. So I would have preferred to have these come out right here, but it's, again, not a big deal. All right. Say it with me, guys, gals. Tighten like a drum. I don't know. So I feel like there's a song there. Just waiting to be sung. I tightened it, I tightened it like a drum. It's like a country song or, you know, you get a death metal version. Tighten it, tighten up the drum. Tighten your drum or you're gonna be. And then we get like, a, you know, some, some pop music. Tighten it like a drum. You gotta tighten it like a drum. Maybe it's like, a, you know, it's like some elevator jazzy. Bum, 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 bum. Tighten, tighten me like a drum, singing with the hum. Uh, and then certainly a rap version. You gotta tighten like a drum as you make a hum, and then you know you aren't so dumb. There you go. Look at that. Show you guys the panoply of musics. You can see the fan like rotating as I twist it down. A um, little bit annoying on the bottom one there because of how that worked. But we're just going to start a, a screw into each corner here. Probably if we can, we probably want to give these fans like a little bit of space from each other. I guess. Just so when they make the like ever minor movements, they're not tapping into each other. So we'll just pull one all the way down to the bottom and weld it all the way up to the top. Put the other one in the middle. Uh, we'll flip it over and see how it looks on the other side first. So don't, I think we might like the look of it with them all touching more. And they'll probably all move in unison if they're all touching anyway. And I'm not super worried about that. Anyway, because of How the rubber padding on these is engineered. Probably not a big deal. Although, they, you know, they can vibrate into each other. So you're right. so maybe there should be like rubber padding on the other side. We're just going to insert all four screws here, just, you know, so we don't have to worry about them later. And we'll flip it over and see how we like the aesthetic with them separated apart together. 
cetera. I love like the honeycomb feel of this. I do feel like a busy worker bee. And uh, I feel I feel validated as a busy worker bee. So you know if that's something you're looking for in a case, look no further than the uh, Be Quiet Silent 802. Ah! Oh. This is like one of the most tedious things you can do with your build. Is do fans, I feel like, because it's like not a measurable impact, if that makes sense. But, like, you are going to reduce the good temperatures on your build. That's going to be not, but it's not like you would reduce them more by getting a better AIO or upgrading your motherboard chipset. Like, there are other. There's only more cost-effective ways to improve your PC performance, but I do, you know, having built my last one all in one go and building this one in segments, I mean, granted, I am filming myself doing it, and that just takes more time natively, but I, I am enjoying it more to kind of take it piece by piece and to really think through all of my options. Okay, yeah, I do, I do, I think having them pushed together is, looks way nicer. So, uh, for better or for worse, that's what we're going to do. Okay, we'll get one mounted pretty firmly, and then we will uh, push the other one down, mount it firmly. See the plastic like really start to push up there. I think one of the other nice things about these fans and the and the plastic footing is that you know you get that you get that vibration resistance, but also uh, it's kind of a um, a dummy shield, if you will. Like you can only go so far on these, and uh, if you push it way too hard, you screw it way too hard, it's just going to impact the rubber footing. It's not going to like grind your fan into the metal and warp your fan and the housing on your fan and that would be miserable. Now we're just gonna pull down on this fan. And note that like as you twist screws in certain directions, this is a good example, um, like I'm turning this one right to the right, it's going to like pull it up in that direction. So I'm just gonna back off this one and we're gonna go uh, in the bottom right one first, that'll pull it nice and tight on the bottom right. I think we are actually up against it, just, just flicking me out a little bit. Tighten like a drum here. Tighten like a drum. I didn't do that as well in the first one. Also, I put a lot of me go on my monologue about rubber feet. So. Uh, let's see what we look like. If we're having problems now, we don't want to have to undo it later. All right, that looks nice and tight. Um, phrasing. Uh, these do mount a little bit weird because, like, the it's flared on the bottom here. Uh, it's a little bit strange. If you want to know the weirdest thing about this, it's, it's made for three 140s. Um, but you can only fit 360 Brad. You can't do a 420. Like they literally need like an additional five centimeters or something like that in order for the Rad deck. For the and Rad is radiators. Right? For those of you who are uninitiated in the land of PC YouTubing. Uh, all right, bing bada boom, friends. I uh, should be ready to go. So we are going to go ahead and just remove the plastic stickers from these. I think I already got it on this. No? It's like I have to stand in just the light, right light. I can't even tell it's on there.
does look schnazzy. Also a technical term. All right, now we're just gonna insert it into the case. Pull the case back up. Slide over to the side so you guys can see as much as possible. So it just looks dope. You know, uh, and notably, the, I chose the QLs because fans are going to be in different orientations here. So, uh, like the LLs do not have RGBs on the back side. So um, you you know you get like the passive light from the front side passing back through. Uh, but but you know, most importantly, the QLs were the only ones in the 140 size that came in white. So. While certain other components were cheaper in white than in black, notably the motherboard, the case. Um, you know, the case went on sale again after it uh, on the black version, but like when I bought it at the time, it was like the people were upcharging $400. On the case. Oh my gosh, I have it twisting the wrong direction. Why is it? doing that so easily. There you go. All right, so we have one fan left. Uh, we inserted five total fans already. Uh, and like I said, there's going to be two more fans on the inside on the radiator. The radiator does take three, but we're gonna leave room on the bottom for the the, uh, the tubing. So that's gonna, the tubing will come out from on bottom here. It'll come up into the case and it will seek holy and holy happiness. And I only just now realized that this fan is in the wrong orientation. Oh, lessons we all learn. Uh, it's in the wrong orientation because the cord's on the bottom. I'm going to look at it again and see if I can delete it. Nope, it doesn't pass through that other side. So now the cord is stuck sticking out by where the, um, by where the pump will come out. So this is one of those things. Watch this video. Double, triple, quadruple check. Be absolutely positively sure. That you are going the right direction with your cords. Theoretically, you should probably loosen this like a drum as well. Um, but because the rubber is floating, I'm not concerned about it. So these are self-tapping as well. So like these have actually skewered themselves into the plastic. Oh, this back screws are so much. So nice too. I'm glad I noticed now because we're going to get these fans all in all correctly. We're not going to have to worry about them, fingers crossed, ever again. Certainly as we put the rest of the build together, we'll be all ready to rock and roll. Um, so I did also some reading on these manuals. They are not super helpful. They are not very descriptive. They don't even talk about the direction of the airflow in the fan. They don't even like note the, don't even note that that's a thing. You do need to, however, and it does make this abundantly clear. And I, and I will check the hard drive cage just for those of you guys who might be wondering. Hey, does this, does this actually work? Does it not work? Yeah, if you look inside this fan actually now, you can see the, the screw marks. Just 
So this will be a little less stable than it would have otherwise been. So that's kind of a bummer, but not a big deal. Let me go grab the hard drive cage just so I don't forget. Oh, I put it in the other room. That's how much I knew I wasn't going to use it. give you two options. Um, one is the standard one and they also give you a half size. It's like a single drive. Uh, now this one, the intended purpose of this one is to fit inside the case uh, in the hard drive slots uh, poking out that way. So I, that aesthetic does not appeal to me. You can buy additional ones of those. Uh, but in, in this build, just note that like, uh, while this might not fit with the fan, the other one certainly will. So uh, if, if you want a double hard drives, I might be, we'll, we'll find out. It might be a problem. But if you only wanted one hard drive, not a problem. I think technically you can also move it. I don't think there's going to be room though with the PSU, so... And even though this is technically less secure, it's still, yeah, it's still, the screw is grabbing, it's pulling it up, um, snugging it nice and tight here. So I'm not really super worried about it. just done that one so I am actually doing this like a drum this time that one's actually really tight nice and tight and we'll finish with the one that I in theory started with Seems like we're good okay uh, well that finishes I should have moved this back further but I've got it back in in the correct orientation the cords are coming out through the middle so now we should have all the cords going the right way which gives us this. It just looks like so much fun already. Okay, so notably this is the fan hub for Be Quiet. I, I, am, un, I am totally unsure how this is going to interface with the case. Uh, I don't even know if we'll be able to use the, the fan speed. Uh, director on the top of the case that the case comes with so you know just keeping that in mind now that this is where you can mount your uh, SSDs as well right here so you and this is just easily removable um, so you're just mounting it right behind your CPU um, so yeah so you can see we have each of the cables from each of these coming up uh, and I did also some reading on the thermal sensors for the thermal probes for the Commander Pro. It does suggest uh, putting those in different compartments of your case because most cases are compartmentalized so you can monitor the temperatures throughout your case. It also notes that it is not to be used uh, with, um, it is not to be used uh, flush against the components. So you can't use those temperature probes with your CPU, if, even if you wanted to, which you wouldn't need to because most, uh, most monitoring software now can easily do that. So it looks like very much will not fit in here. Um, so if that's something you really, you know, were prioritizing, you could just go without this fan. Um, Again, I don't care, but you could just skip that fan. 
this one will easily fit in here. Uh, granted, there's nothing to screw on on the top, so you'd just be screwing into these two screws on the bottom, uh, which is not ideal. Uh, instead, like I said, these are supposed to go into here. Not something I'm interested in. I don't like the aesthetic. I don't like something. I like like as clean a style, as clean of styling as possible. But you know, that's an option available to you. So just know that this this does reduce your options for hard drive trays. Again, not a concern for me, but it might be for you. Uh, if anything, I'll be putting on SATA drives here. Uh, that'd be my preference anyway. Um, but I might even just go pure NVMe with this build. I, you know, there's not really, not really a need for anything else these days. Um, not until these get to like 12 gigs, you know. And otherwise, I'll be using my other build and just saving stuff uh, onto the other build using local network storage. Okay, so next thing's next. You gotta figure out where you wanna put your Commander Pro. Does recommend like double stick taping this to wherever it is that you want it first. I don't know why it recommends doing that first. Seems like you'd wanna do that second or last, but you know, who am I? Um, and there's no way we're gonna wanna use these. I kept these in here, uh, but we're gonna do Zip ties, wire cutters. Um, so let's just get these out of the way. I think I left them on here so that me and my dense headedness would see them being used on these slot trays, but I think that that's gonna be sufficiently obvious uh, when I inevitably don't think clearly. And you guys can all make fun of me for having done this and taking away my safety that I had already pre-planned for myself. Uh oh, one of those little rubberized pads came out for the hard drive. All right, well, the next thing that we're supposed to do is to slot in our PSU. So this one does have like a bit of a weird Placement for the PSU um, and it's like obnoxious to kind of like reach in here but you know the shroud's nice it's just a little bit annoying to like feed those cables up in through background wing ding make a ding a ring um, there is some spacing in here for cabling to come through onto the base of the mug board which is really helpful and there is also up through the top plenty of room so those are some nice options. Uh, I think um, I don't really have any plans to mount this quite yet. Uh, honestly, the place where it was likely to go is just right in here. Uh, so I can pull it out and tinker with it whenever I need to. Then you can plug in these other hubs, as I expected, into the USB slots. Whoop. Uh, and that'll uh, that'll allow you to connect more than six fans. Um, <clears throat> I, it does not in the, it does not in the directions describe how those will be oriented in terms of numbers. Um, so I'll probably be using this for like the last the front three fans and and using the six fans internally. Um, and just d deciding on their orientation using this. You cannot skip numbers, you have to go sequentially. Uh, and then the order that you put them is the order that it will display like a, like running LED lighting. <sighs> well, this has been fun, as long as you describe fun uh, loosely. Um, certainly a rewarding experience. Uh, we are going to need two SATA connectors. Uh, we'll be unboxing our graphics card and grabbing what we need from that here pretty soon as well. I'll uh, just put this up over on top of this. Probably going to go get the... Okay, so... Uh, I mean, we're already 
this deep. Let's uh, let's let's finish. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mount in the PSU right now. Take this last fan. Boxes. And then what a lot of people recommend that you do for cable management uh, is just going ahead uh, and attaching the cables to all of the components on the front side, running the cabling back to the PSU, and then tightening all the slack back on the PSU. Uh, once you are ready for it. So what we're, all we're going to be doing right now uh, Because of that and it is a little bit obnoxious. I'm not gonna lie to you and for most PSUs, um, but I stupidly Was not remembering how this actually functions. Um, be quiet. Actually, it's kind of genius about this um, Most PSUs are super obnoxious to like get into the PSU shroud You do want a PSU shroud because the PSU power supply unit for those of you who are like what are you talking about uh, for your power supply you don't want it just like it open in your case because that's it's it's like the ugliest component that you have um, so what be quiet has actually done I'll show you guys this from the back side is uh, done these thumb screw this thumb screw option here where we're just going to remove this plate and this plate screws on to the PSU and then you can just drop in your PSU and pull it out as you need to. So we are just going to take this, slide this over to the side. Grab our PSU. Now we do, I think that this plate is like universal. Uh, no, it looks like it is like a slightly different one. Top and bottom. Okay, so there are screw holes. Okay, now the only thing to remember, make sure your fan is facing the right direction. For this case, we want the intake pulling the air. So for this is the front of the fan, you can tell by looking at it. Um, it doesn't actually describe how it moves here. So we'll leave on this danger high voltage thing. Um, but the, the fan pulls up and then cools off the radiator. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't like actually show in any of their documentation how that works. Uh, but you also notice that like they fix their labeling on all of their new ones to accommodate for this because this is how everyone builds them. But then all of their all of their descriptions are upset. So like this is right set up for you guys, upside down for me, right set up for me, upside down for you. So. Uh, you'd think that they would have like inverted that so you could see it, but they don't. the convenient thing about this be quiet case is that I can just go ahead, screw this on, drop this in, and then I can just pull it in and out uh, when I'm ready to use it. And they're all just thumb screwed on, so super easy to change it out. Uh, this does have like the world's small screws for one of like the you know the component that handles all of the electricity for your entire unit so that's a little funky but you know what are you going to do about it a lot of times like newer components and gadgets it often feels like uh we're just increasing the power requirements of things on this and so some things are getting bigger while other things are getting smaller and we just have kind of like these long known standards of sizes for things. So it becomes a race to how much you can squish into things. I know, that's super descriptive. But this is a good example where I'm sure this was like the standard screw size for PSUs that was adopted by in some regulatory body, governmental or not, that decided this is the size of screws that we need for power supplies when they were like 100 watts. And now that they're 1,000 watts, it's like, oh, we're still going to have to use those same screws? 
Now conveniently also, you'll remember in this case, I will pull it back over, show you guys what I mean in here, but as you look down inside, wow, there are a lot of things in the way. Ah, uh, it's hard to see, but in the bottom of this case, there are actually rubber feet. I don't know if I can get a good angle that actually shows it. But there are rubber feet along the corners to hold the PSU uh, in place and keep it from like jittering all over. So that's convenient and you can feel them as, as it goes in. So I, you can really feel that securing the device. So that's helpful. Uh, and then you can easily see which one you bought in the event that you forgot. It will not show up in like hardware finder so if you uh, if you don't know what power supply you have the best bet you have is to literally open up your computer see what it is then go from there and when we actually do the computer this is probably the one of the last things we do for cable management uh, before we like tighten everything down is just go ahead unscrew these pull it out plop in the cables uh, that we have already connected to all the components slide the PSU back in bunch up all the cables on the underneath part and then we will put back the plastic coverings inside the case um, oops, I can get this one around. and this is that fan controller that I was talking about before you could change the speed of the fan using the fan controller up here um, I think probably just going to want to rely on uh, IQ software to manage fan speeds though so um, but inside the case uh, there are two covers that will go over this grate so you won't see down in there. But if you did have like an RGB power supply, you know, that's an option for you. you I think you also can... I mean, this also looks like you could actually mount like a, a fan on here if you wanted to. Uh, it's gonna, it would bump up into your motherboard. But I'm trying to see if you had like a... Yeah, it's not the right, the screw holes aren't in the right location, so not really an option. I think it just purely is for, uh, you can set up all of your, uh, all of your doodads, your uh, S, uh, solid state hard drives, right there, your three and a half. All right, um, that's it for this build, actually fully, completely, that's all we're gonna do right now. Uh, look forward to the next video where we will be uh, applying all of the componentry to the motherboard and then we'll probably do a separate video where we mount the motherboard into the case, um, run all the wiring, get everything ready to go, and the AIO will be uh, last when it finally gets here. It is the last component of the lot arrive. Hopefully it's one of the last things you like really need for your computer to get finalized. I mean, be worse to not have your NVMe because that often goes underneath your um, GPU. It's also why I'm kind of like, ah, if I'm going to do it, should I just buy one now? Because I'm not going to want to get out my GPU later on. So I didn't get an Asus motherboard that has that Q release. Give me a Q release, baby. All right. Well, with that, uh, hope you guys all enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to link my Amazon affiliate link down below. Um, just know that like, if you're buying something on Amazon and you haven't clicked on an affiliate link, uh, it's just money that goes to Amazon that would have otherwise gone to somebody else. So it doesn't matter what you buy, just click on the affiliate link beforehand and uh, someone somewhere will get some money. Uh, notably if it's mine. That money goes to me, and it's money that you otherwise wouldn't have spent at all, so it's a nice way to give back to the channel without having to do anything. I'm not sponsored by Amazon or anything like that. Uh, it's the business my wife and I share together it just has an Amazon affiliate link that my wife has used for selling her book, which was a best-selling watercolor book. So if that's what you're into, check her out. Until next time, good luck out there. Have some fun. Keep on building. Bye for now.